Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about kind of hot subject. It's going to be ephemera vulgata or ephemera danica in mergers, whatever you want to make, depending on color. And it's kind of hot subject because they are hatching in this time, more or less in Europe and probably somewhere else in the world. So people are using them and why not making it? It's going to be a merger phase of this insect, not the full dry imago. Uh, I like emergers because they are easier to get from trout, from fish's points of view and that's why fish are more likely to eat emerger phase than actual dry insect. I love those, I fished them many times and they never failed for me. So let's get into materials and then into tying. So uh, materials wise I'm going to use thread, it's Semperfly, Nano Silk, 18, 18 odd. Uh, I love it because it's thin, super strong, and I can make very strong dubbing loop with it without materials uh, slipping out or without my thread breaking, uh, which is actually a bigger problem. Uh, if you use uh, regular threads, they can break if you spin the loop too tight. Hook is Daichi 1720 in size 12 perhaps you can use size 10 but I think it's better to go slightly smaller than the actual in insect because footprint of, of your fly will actually resemble a bigger insect uh, than actual fly is uh, apart from that hook shape is long as you can see straight shank uh, to imitate that long body that mayflies have. I don't like making extended bodies uh, primarily because I have lower hook, uh, hook set rate, uh, hook up rate, sorry. Uh, this one gives me overall coverage of body with the hook and that's what I like. Body I will make with Antron and in this case I will use this Hexagenia color but you can adopt it to any color of mayflies that you're making. Uh, there are plenty of colors in this dispenser and this one is, as you can see here, by Wapsi and Trondabing Blend. I got it a long time ago. Some of them I use more, some of them less. Uh, for the trailing shock, I will use two colors. Rusty Orange, uh, it's, sorry, Ginger Variant with Hexagenia mixed together because this this one uh, resembles Hitin, uh, which is kind of orangey color, rusty color, and that's what that's going to be for the trailing shock. For the ribbing part, I will use Mole's Fur in brown, just looks buggy and uh, it gives nice contrast to the body. You can use whatever else you have. It doesn't matter, you can use even Antron, why not? And finally, for, for the wing loop and legs, I will use CDC. This is Mallard CDC, but you can use whatever you have. But later during the video, I'll talk about shapes that you should use. Now let's get into tying. So I will start with the HE hooking device, 1720 as I was saying, size 12, uh, 18 aught Semperfly Nano Silk. Uh, Semperfly Nano Silk. I'll start with waxing the thread to prevent uh, slipping of the thread. And first things first, you should actually plan your fly. So what I want to do here more or less is I want to make, I, I to split it kind of in thirds. So if this is going to be the size of the head, more or less here, and then thorax will begin here. So exactly where I want to begin my thorax, I will start my thread. That's kind of a reminder for me. So I'll start wrapping thread. Reward, inflate. No, got the thread. We don't need it so much. Now, first things first. I will use Ginger Variant and Hexagenia. I'll just pull out a few pinches like so. You don't need to use too much. You can use color that you like, but this is going to be for the trailing shock. I'll lead the thread all the way to the bend. 
you can even lead it a little bit into the band and what you want to do is to softly dub this it's going to be very ugly but there is a reason behind it so this is what I got like not nearly as tight dubbing noodle as I usually do and tight everything quite uh, in quite the same spot to make a trailing shock from this I use velcro and I'm going to be very rough so one side two sides just do as much brushing as you want until you get desired effect and desired effect is kind of tapered trailing shock that almost resembles the shape of an insect uh, dragging uh, behind the body of the fly so that's first thing first now I'll make a dubbing loop at this moment and I'll be generous with the length so I'll just he come here twice around the loop just catch it a little bit and come back as you can see I didn't make a big build up over here and that's one of the reasons why I'm using this GSP thread and just to make things easier I will hang dubbing twister onto the loop and let it hang behind my behind the vice or there is a knob on the vice so I'll just let it hang until I dub the body now some uh, I noticed that some of those dubbing some of those colors over here they dub more easily than others uh, because they are less tangled so if you can pull out a nice long uh, clump of dubbing then it's okay if it's like stuck inside then you may have problems dubbing it so what I do this is just to clear out the path so I can dub more easily and more closely uh, I'll take lengthwise portion of the dubbing and I'll just spin it in clockwise direction around the thread now this is rather big fly so it has relatively thick body so we need a little bit more dubbing than usual it's not just small pinches but as you can see I'm tapering the dubbing as I dub it on the, onto the thread so it's going thicker and thicker as I advance towards the head of the fly okay now I have noodle that's around five to six centimeter long it's probably not enough but I'll just start wrapping and as, as I'm saying all the time with thinner noodles you have more control so as you can see I can overlap controlling the thickness of the fly okay this looks so far so good and as you can see with the relatively lot of dubbing I covered just half of the body I intend to cover so again I'll make relatively compact noodle I mean as compact as I can and then I'll just cover the rest of the plant body and that's up until here but I'm trying to maintain this taper that I started already or keep it level it's kind of personal preference what you want to do it already had some has some shades here and I like it because of this this dubbing is very nice so, but I need a little bit more so I'm taking a small clump again I'll place it lengthwise and just spin it around the thread dubbing uh, Antron dubbing dubs a bit differently than natural furs. Natural furs, they kind of you know, like use small clumps and you just spin them around the thread. This goes lengthwise, which is almost impossible with short fur. Uh, so, when it comes to short fur, mole is, ex mole is exactly the short fur we're talking about. So, I'll take a small clump over here and I'll start dubbing. Now I can just take okay, 
take everything and I'll dub only one uh, dubbing loop leg. Okay, it's open all the way to the body and I'll dub it in relatively uh, well, not tight noodle because just by spinning the, the, the V loop I'm going to tighten it. So I'm just grabbing it around the thread and I need maybe four centimeters. I have excess new uh, excess length for sure but I like to be sure that I have enough. So this is what I got. It's not tight but when I make it tighter just go with this leg I'll rub a little bit of wax to make it to make more friction and then I'll spin this you can spin it counterclockwise or clockwise it's up to you this time because it's tight and under tension because of the weight and I don't see any difference in in controlling the loop so do whatever I like to brush it out to give it a little bit of kind of buggy look Again, you can see it here, and I'll just start first wrap exactly where the body meets trailing shock, and then try to make those nice, even wraps around the body, and that's it. I'll spin tying thread around the loop a couple of times just to make it more secure I'll make a couple more wraps over here because I need also to catch uh, CDC now and when it comes to CDC for the wing loop we need a relatively big because this is rather big big hook relatively big and long feathers and preferably in triangular shape which would be this and this one, this one is pretty big. It has around two and a half centimeters, maybe three. I mean, it's not big, there are bigger ones, but it's quite enough. And I'll find one more. So I'll have two of them. And I'll align the tips. Align the tips. And now, when I stroke those barbs all the way, they will meet at the tip. Now, I'll stroke all the barbs I have. I want I don't want to waste any. And there are like op two options for this this wing that I make. And I'll show you in a second what. So I'll sh put place it like so and then with one two relatively loose wraps without any tension I'll just place everything here everything is on the top. These are just wraps that I will use to hold everything. This is kind of the, the size of the loop I want. More or less half of the body, not the hook, overall hook. And then I'll place the tag near the eye and catch it. And then I will see how much left of the wing I have. Like how long is this wing. So it tells me that I can actually pull these buttons a little bit more like so and then I can catch them and keep them on the top let me see okay okay cut the excess kind of taper it down if you want and then I'll just cinch it down with thread and this will hold it into the place it won't go anywhere now make another loop and this this time this loop will be for the legs two times around the loop with your thread to keep everything together to keep those legs together and then move your thread back to where you want thorax to begin I'll cinch everything down even more and then I'll use a little bit of Here's ear color entron. I'll add chocolate brown. So again, 
just a little bit of one and two mix them together blend them together just to cover the thorax over here so when I go with the legs and palmer through the thorax it will um, dive into the dubbing and get a little bit more protected and also the disc color gives a little bit of contrast to the body which if you see some pictures online or if you have if you're lucky enough to have those mayflies around you at the moment you can see that they have a little bit darker thorax uh, and not the same color so I'll I make this thorax over here and then you'll see that I will leave enough room for the head this time okay let me see I don't like this I'll just spin it a little bit more okay now this is plenty of room for the head uh, and you will see soon why I need relatively a lot of room now for the legs for the dubbing loop loop where I, ha I where I need my legs uh, I usually don't want to use triangular shape of the feather I want to use oval and oval is something like this and because this is all those are like relatively same length because this is very large feather I will use just one half of it I won't use the whole feather because it would be too much I already have those wings which will support fly on the surface legs will add to it but I want them there for the movement primarily now I will place this feather into the clip and just take half of it as I said I just want those barbs to be perpendicular to the rachis okay I have it parallel and then just cut what I need place it into the dubbing loop and I like to keep the dubbing loop uh, those legs I like to keep relatively near the thorax I don't want to have a piece of dubbing loop that's kind of without any purpose there so I'll just spin this Again, I'm not very concerned, very much concerned in which direction. Just have nice, uh, nice brush over here, and then a couple of wraps at the same spot at the beginning, and then you can just start palmering and adding those legs. And to be honest, I like to have more those legs. Just makes the fly alive okay this is this is enough again two times around the loop catch it I'll get back off here I'll just cut the excess okay still nice and plenty of room now I'll just make sure that I caught this loop were uh, strong enough now I will use dubbing needle uh, dubbing needle to kind of break this reiki over here and get it into the shape as you can see the feather is not so sort of fighting me so much now so I forgot one thing that's to brush those legs okay now I'll catch as many of these barbs as I can make the bubble as you can see here and then you will see why I left the thread exactly at the hook eye now I'll go keep it on the top and go rearwards making this kind of base because I'm going to make a whip finish soon, I'll wax the thread too. It will create more friction. Now, when I pull this back, it's much easier to catch those tips here, create the head at the same time, 
and finish off the fly then if I started everything here then I would make to go then I would have to go a couple of times back and forth back and forth which is not something I want now I'll do the whip finish and that would be it as you can see white thread gets the color of the un of the material that's under uh, that's why I don't need to color it and even if it gets a little bit light in color when I make two whip finish knots it's okay and two whip, fin whip finish knots is because this knot here is quite exposed so I'm just making sure that everything is going to be as durable as possible now I want to kind of brush this out left and right to make these legs pop out sideways and this is what is going to be from the fish's point of view like this moves a lot and one more thing to add if you want to make this more merger style you can just take your scissors cut these let's call them wings very short and you get only loop but I like to keep those because it's it's quite useful and visible we have trailing shock Antron gives nice sheen to the fly translucency as well and it just screams I'm alive eat me so guys this would be it this would be my uh, ephemera danica emerger pattern uh, I hope you liked it I hope you will try it these days and please comment down below how you liked it until next time, keep safe and tight lines.